Hello friends and welcome back to another Pokemon VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today again, like the previous two episodes, we're diving deep into pre and getting ready for Series 6, which will be starting next week on the ranked ladder like i said in the other two episodes if you're not really too familiar with series six or the rules that will be introduced on the first of september on the ranked ladder then click up here i will link you to the video that i've done explaining all of the the rule changes the banned pokemon what's allowed what's not allowed and some ideas around what things are gonna maybe look like going forward but this week on the channel i'm kind of just doing as much as i can to throw a few rental teams your way so you've got at least teams to try out as soon as the rank ladder does officially open with series 6 on the 1st of september so you can at least start learning and getting to know what uh, pokemon are being played and getting your head around what things you would like to play so today on the channel we're going to be featuring a g max charizard team now g max charizard is literally one of the strongest uh, g max pokemon gigantamax pokemon that we've got access to in the format since sword and shield came out but it's somehow managed to elude the banning uh, that has come into effect with series 6 so it's good news for us pokemon players because we do get to play with this phenomenally strong pokemon still um and uh, we can build around it the only thing is we've lost one of its best buddies in Torkoal, so the sun is not as easy to set up anymore no but we do still have uh, like you can see on this team the cancel nine tails that does have that drought ability that can power up that solar power and there's also options with manual sun as well things like sableye i've seen a lot of use with charizard so there's lots of options there meow stick another one I think me I'll stick at sunny day it definitely gets rain dance I know that anyway team today is uh, G Max Charizard, Dusclops, Rhyperia, Rotom Wash, uh, the uh, Kanto Ninetales was gonna say a lol in there and the Amoongus so uh, we've got a trick room switch in here with the Charizard we've got a nice fast mode with that Charizard and then we've got a nice solid trick room mode with the Dusclops Rhyperia that we've seen in previous series uh, coming in and kind of amalgamating into this Charizard team so I'm looking forward to playing it I think it's a really solid build I hope you enjoy it if you do try it but as always we'll play a couple of games with it and the rental team will be available at the end of the episode there'll be a poker paste down in the description if you want to grab that and try that out uh, before the rules kick off because obviously this video is going out before the rank ladder does update with those new series 6 rules so the poker paste is there for you to try out and uh, test on anywhere like showdown which is running tournaments at the minute i don't believe they've got a ladder set up probably waiting for the rules to um be introduced before they uh they update the ladder themselves so we got jimmy up first I wonder what jimmy's bringing to this match is it a series six team it does look as though it is so we've got salazzle gengar Amoongus, um, Galarian Slowbro, Weezing, uh, Galarian, Weezing, and Rapian. So it is a mono poison type team, which is kind of fun. Uh, it's going to be interesting to play, of course. They've got some uh, fast threats, though, that do cause Gengar, uh, Charizard, a few issues. Obviously, the Gengar, the Slazzle do outspeed Charizard. Um, but I think, huh, yeah. I don't know if we want to get our sun up straight away to be honest i think we do lead char um could lead rotom could lead rotom could lead amoongus as well because then we we carry the threat to put things to sleep um especially if we can get an air stream up which would be which would be nice 100 percent um yeah i think what we'll do is lead charizard amoongus um i think we'll see the galarian wheezing from my opponent it helps shut down the abilities on things like nine tails and i think we probably want to go with our trick room mod in the back with dusclops rhyperia if i'm honest um yeah we'll go with that we'll see do worry about the glarian slob bro if it gets its trick room up and it's got access to something like surf or scald uh, that could be a little bit problematic uh, generally, when you see Galarian Slowbro, though, you're going to see it setting Trick Room up. It normally has Bulldoze, so it's proccing a weakness policy on something. That could be on Drapion or something like that, but Drapion doesn't normally really appreciate Trick Room, especially if Rhyperia is around. So, let's see what we've got. We've got Fake Out options on my opponent's end. Obviously, the Slazzle can limp Fake Out. Um, we could just literally go for a Max Quake into the Gengar but I think it's probably better if we go G Max Wildfire into the Gengar and get that residual damage kind of stacking up as soon as possible 
Um, and I think... Do I just protect here? I could just protect. I mean, we're probably going to get faked out. I can't see the Salazzle. I don't know what the Salazzle would do. It would fake out, but I don't know what else we would see it go for. Obviously, the Salazzle being a fire type as well is going to be immune to our kind of chip damage from the... Um, the wildfire, but we even if the Gengar is sashed here, we should be able to get it in one turn. So, a nice thing about the casual ladder as well, I don't know if you guys ever play the casual ladder, but you obviously can see nicknames on here. I should have thought a little bit ahead of time and done some nicknames of ourselves. It's quite a nice uh, option to see on a lot of these um, Pokemon when you're playing them, a little bit different anyway, because we don't get those on the ranked ladder for certain reasons i guess so night shift the gengar gonna actually max so it's gonna be uh g max gengar here um maybe it would have been better to go for the rage powder but i still stand by why we've protected here we've got the sash on the among us so we kind of want to preserve that if we can um and gengar's not going to really be taking down charizard here to be honest uh, it might have been better to go for Airstream and then we had the kind of the play of the field the next turn, to be honest. Um, which would have allowed us to get the jump on Salazzle and then with another Airstream we would have been able to outspeed the Salazzle with a Moongus and then get a Spore. And we're going to see a Max Ooze. It is going to boost a special attack on that Gengar and the Salazzle. Um, which is a little bit worrying, of course. We might have to rely on the Rage Powder from this Among Us the next turn if we don't pick up the knockout onto Gengar, which I don't think we will here. Um, yeah, no way. I think we're going to need an Airstream the next turn, and we're probably going to have to go for... Uh, yeah, I think we got Airstream into the Salazzle, and we got Rage Powder. Now, the Salazzle probably picks up the Among Us here, and then we probably take... Um, A max phantasm into Charizard from the Gengar at plus one, which is really gonna do it's gonna do a bunch of damage. But we should take it, hopefully. We'll see what this Salazzle goes for. Imagine it's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna fling, huh? That's interesting. This citrus berry. We'll take that. Yep, that'll that'll put us back full health, that'll restore our sash, so that's good. That's excellent. We would, we would have flinched otherwise, but uh, G-Max Terror coming out. going to track the Amoongus, which is fine. Uh, we do survive it. Um, and now we're in that great position, so we can't escape, but we can. We're going to get the jump on the Gengar this next turn. So, uh, yeah, we take the Salazzle down to it. Well, basically it's Sash, not quite it's Sash. Um, and we'll be able to airstream the Gengar this next turn. Um... But to be honest, we can just go Airstream into the Salazzle and go for a Spore into the Gengar. Probably not a bad idea as well. It stops the Gengar uh, boosting its special attack anymore if we do miss the knockout there. Uh, which I don't think we will. But another Airstream. Yeah, there's the Max Guard. So we'll be able to just guarantee the knockout onto the Salazzle and uh, have the speediest Amoongus in town. But I think we should have probably done this the first two turns and then wildfire the last turn really it would have prolonged our G Max wildfire gone into the uh, the latter turns of this game which would have meant we got a little bit more out of it we do see the Gengar go for that max guard though so it is going to avoid the spore this turn but it's um it's in a, a little bit of an awkward spot going into the next turn for sure we're both going to uh, revert from these G Max forms, but whatever comes in next to the Gengar is going to be prone to uh, being put to sleep. The only thing I would say about the um, Galarian Slowbro is that they normally carry safety goggles. That's kind of the common item on them. So whether or not this Galarian Slowbro has got the safety goggles, that will be an interesting thing because we can go for. I think we go Scorching Sands into Gengar and we'll try this ball. Uh, if we can stop the Galarian Slowbro. Slowbro setting up the trick room. It makes it a lot easier for us. And even if not, then we still got um, Rhyperia in the back to come in. Um, and if they go trick room here, then we um, we still have we still have Amoongus on the field, so we can switch out for Dusclops, get that regenerator going. Um, but no safety goggles unless it's holding a lum. Nope. 
Nope, nope, nope. Gorp, go to sleep. We do get a cursed body onto um, our Scorching Sun, so we can't use that anymore. It's a little bit of a shame. Uh, but like I say, one thing we could potentially do here is either go put the whatever comes in. Uh, we could put. Well, we can't put the Amoogus to sleep, can we? Um, but we can Heat Wave. And we can go for. I kind of want to go for a Giga Drain just in case that Amoongus is sashed. That's the thing I worry about. Like, Amoongus is known to carry sash. Oh, we're not going to see the. We're not going to see it here. We're going to see. Try and see if the slow brawl wakes up, I guess. Um, as we try and get a heat wave. <clears throat> Still does so much damage, so that's good. Um, and what's a slow brawl doing? It wakes up. One turn wake. And gets a trick room up. Oh no! <laughs> okay. Well, it makes it a bit more interesting, I guess. I think you'd probably go for the spore into Charizard. Um, we'll get Dusclops on the field. And then we'll keep Amoongus for a little bit later on in this game, I think. Okay, what's my opponent going to do? Come on, dude. Is he going to go expanding force? I don't know if he will. Might not. Well, he probably does have expanding force. Uh, it makes sense because then if you max yourself, then you can set the psychic terrain up so you can use it when you kind of revert. I'm going to see a light bulb and leftovers. Huh. Okay. So we'll see. Oh, Pollen Puff. Gonna be into this slow, bro. Oh, that's a nice play from my opponent, you know, taking advantage of the room that we're giving them because of the threat there with the um the heat wave. We do get the clops onto the field. I think the thing is like we need to really start taking care of um the Amoongus more than anything. Um Yeah, I'm gonna just nightshade the Amoongus because Pointless at the minute going for the slow brawl, especially when all it's going to get is pollen puff from this. Oppo uh, like the, the opposing moon is just pollen puff. We see the quick draw activate, so it's going to go first. We're going to see a shadow ball. Not into our Dusclops though. Maybe suspecting an ally switch? Potentially, I don't know. Um, we did get the ally switch into the moon. If we somehow get a heat wave here, then. Oh yeah, they, they played for the ally switch. But I don't play Ally Switch, so <laughs> you shouldn't play those games with me. We do get the Heat Wave, and um, yeah, that kind of sucks because that's the effect that Ally Switch has on on this or on the game, doesn't it? It makes people make crazy plays that they wouldn't ever usually make. Um, okay, well, we get the Heat Wave. We actually get pretty fortunate with a burn there as well. Uh, we're no longer disabled. I think we'll protect here and we'll try and yeah we'll try and stall a turn of our sleep. Um, we'll go for a nightshade into the Amoongus. See if we can wake up. I don't think we will because we've got at least one turn of guaranteed sleep here to take. But maybe we'll get the wake up next turn which would then get the Amoongus and then it's pretty um, easy sailing from there on out. So there's a pollen puff again. This is my point earlier. Like if we just attack in the slow brawl, we're just they're easily able to wipe away that damage. So we may as well concentrate on the thing that's kind of restoring the HP for my for my opponent rather than the thing that is getting restored and just wasting attacks generically. Um again we get caught out. And my opponent's making some good plays, you know, with the um going for the pollen puff when they're suspecting us to protect. Now they'll spore Charizard. Um, but this time what we're going to do is just switch into Amoongus here um, and then go for that Nightshade again into their Amoongus because I think they will spawn the Charizard this turn they may double up with a, an expanding force it would make sense suspecting maybe an Amoongus switching in here but we're going to be alright because we've got Rhyperia in the back to come in and it'll easily deal with that slow brawl once the Trick Room's um, ended we don't wake up, unfortunately, which is not great. There's a sport and a shadow ball into Dusclops this time, but we can put the opposing 
Slobrot to sleep and we can get Charizard back in and I think that's probably the best thing to do at this point. Um, and I don't think they spawn. Into Dusclops. Not this turn. Unless they suspect the switch out. Unless they do. Maybe they do. I don't know. But they're going to try and get the Trick Room up again. And this is what we need to try and deny. While getting rid of the Amoongus. And maybe it would have even been better to... Well, maybe get Rhyperior onto the field, to be honest. Um, it seems like their only attack and move is the Pollen Puff on the Amoongus. So it doesn't look like we've got like a, a Giga Drain or Energy Ball threat there. There's a the Sport. Who would have thought? Mono. Mono is poison. Solid. Okay, there's a Pollen Puff again. And uh, it's going to be into our Amoongus this time. Mm. And a little bit more health coming back. So I think now we probably get Rhyperior onto the field. Hope that that Slobro stays asleep at least one more turn and we'll just heat wave. We just need longer than a one turn wake up. That's all we need because if they get the trick room up again, it's going to make things a little bit awkward for us. Yeah, that's normal. The Amoongus is protecting. Let's see. I've got the heat wave. Get a nice bit of chip damage into this slow brawl. And then we can kind of lock this game. There's a sleep, so that's good. And the Amoongus just restoring a bit of health. So yeah, now we locked it. We can just heat wave and um, high horsepower, and that should lock the game up for us pretty nicely. So Amoongus coming in pretty useful in the latter stages of this game, even though the earlier ones as well. Pretty nice team there from my opponent as well. It's always nice seeing these monotype teams. Uh, when you see them, uh, when players use them and things like that. So very, uh, like, big props to my opponent for that. Um, I always like a monotype team. Right, we will move on to our next opponent. Wow, that was a long one, didn't it? Drag out and just a little bit, didn't it? So the team we're facing is Torkoal, Hatterin, uh, Rhyperia, uh, Executor, Alol and Executor, Alol and Marowak, and Indeedy. Okay, so Sun going to be pretty good here if we can get it. Uh, going, um, I think like double heat wave isn't bad uh, here. The Indeedy obviously makes things difficult for us for sure. Um, I do want to bring Rhyperia. I do. I know they've got their own Rhyperia. Um, the only thing I would think maybe could be good would be Rotom for their Rhyperia, but I don't know. Um, it doesn't look like they've got like their, a, a way to set up their Rhyperia with like a bulldoze or anything like that. Because um, one thing we could potentially do, it would be a strange way to go around this. Just looking at what my opponent's got, we could potentially lead Rhyperia Dusclops and go for bulldoze like Max Quake turn one, get a special defense boost. But I think it seems a bit of a an awkward way to go around things. We're probably better off keeping uh, Rhyperia in the back and maybe going with that as our max mon, especially if Trick Room's kind of the main player for my opponent rather than going with the Charizard here. Um, but like I say, we do have the option to go Heat Wave, Heat Wave if we want or Heat Wave Overheat if we want. Um, depends what my opponent's gonna bring out. But it is the Indeedy Executor. So it does, I know it's a Dragon Grass, uh, so it's neutral. But I still think double heat wave could be could potentially be enough to get the executor. Unless it maxes, of course. But you've got to think it probably wants to go for a trick room. The opponent's whole team's kind of based around trick room Pokemon, so you would think um, it wants to go for that trick room, which makes me not want to max Charizard here. Wants to we do see the psychic seed activate on the Indeedy. Um yeah, I think I'm just gonna go heat wave and heat wave. And um, the solar power from Charizard, hopefully bo boosted, obviously with the sun, uh, along with the nine tails. Heat wave should be enough. So, first heat wave. Let's see. Wow. Okay, gonna be enough to get the. Ex mm, what's this? Is this a citrus berry? Okay. Hopefully nine tails. 
Come on, Ninetales, you can do it. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Yeah, there we go. We'll get a crit on Ndidi as well. So Nelly take the Ndidi down. Not too worried about the Ndidi. Taking the Executor down was the big thing though. Um, obviously the Solar Power Charizard Heat Wave was a big, big thing for us. Um, let's see what my opponent brings in next. Maybe the Hatterene. Um, oh, it's Rhyperia. Okay, so. I mean, we do have Solar Beam. So we could just Heat Wave. Get Heat Wave Solar Beam. Because then that gets rid of the Ndidi. Solar Beam's going to do a lot to uh, Rhyperia. Like I say, hmm, at this point, nah, I still think we go around in Rhyperia. Like, uh, I think we'll probably see Follow Me again. Rhyperia going to max. We'll probably proc a weakness policy in all honesty. Um. And they're going to go max Rock Ball. I think into Charizard as well. Could have went for the Blast Burn there. It just feels kind of wasteful when we've got a Rhyperia sitting in the back that we could make use of. You know, follow me. Solar Beam does a nice chunk to the Rhyperia. Probably the Weakness Policy. Yeah, coming out. Okay, that's fine. Um... This is the thing, if they target Charizard here, uh, then we've still got Ninetales that we can make use of at the end of this game if we need to. Um, max Rock 4, is it going to be? To Charizard. The Charty ain't going to help us. I think we need to be Max to uh, to take this. I'd be very surprised. No way. No way. No way. No way. Okay. It's a bit risky that previous play because we kind of rely on the speed tire Charizard winning that. We should maybe put nine tails for similar situations to like maybe a speed splat lower than Charizard just for situations like that. Um, okay, we'll bring in our own right here at this point. And it'll be interesting to see what my opponent's last Pokemon is, of course. Uh, but all we need to do now is switch. Nine tails out to Dusclops, and then we can get nine tails back onto the field. Um, oh, it's Marowak. Marowak. Okay. Hmm. This seems a little more awkward. Of course, because we're min speed right here. So, I still think we'll do what our main plan was. We'll get Dusclops onto the field. We could max and just max guard here. Because I think you got into our Rhyperia. I mean, we could just protect. Depends how slow. I mean, they're probably both min speed as well, so it kind of comes down to. Um, I think I'm going to max guard and get Dusclops in because. The worst case scenario is we lose Dusclops to maybe something like a double up here. Uh, I don't see that happening. I mean, something like Poltergeist from the Marowak into Dusclops, potentially. And maybe a Max Quay. And then we get Ninetales back in, can deal with the, Rhyper the, the opposing Rhyperia, uh, and our Rhyperia Max can 100% deal with the Marowak, so we don't have too much to worry about there. But I don't see that that kind of panning out. So let's see what my opponent goes for here. I think the max guard isn't the worst play at all. And there's a bone meringue. Okay. Targeting that nine tails down. Interesting. I think they're not doubling that. They're going for a um Thanks for the follow, whoever that was. It won't come up on this screen because I don't have my Twitch alerts on here, but I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we're Trick Room here. Um, I think Dusclops is a big enough target for my opponent to chase down now. Actually, no, we don't want a Trick Room. We definitely don't want a Trick Room. We want to just go for a Nightshade into the Marowak. We want to chase down the Marowak here because uh, we don't need the Trick Room. The Ninetales can come in after this and just beat the uh, the Rhyperia. All we need to do at this point is beat that Marowak. So that is like our main goal here. Um, again, there might be questions about my opponent 
thinking that ally switch is going to be something that comes into play so maybe they guess around that maybe not we'll see what they do but it's got to be a big question on their mind right now with the uh, the ally ally switch being such a big move so we'll see what my opponent does All right, getting into it. Shadowborn going to be into this clubs and picks up the knockout. So hopefully we can take a max quake, which we should do from the opposing uh, right period. Wow. Okay. Now we don't. We definitely need a trick room up then. Okay, correct. That's why. That's why. That's really, really bad. Because now, I don't know if we're going to be able to deal with a Marowak now with Ninetales. Yeah, like, that is a huge crit. Ah, uh, I don't think we can win this now. That crit has just killed the game for us. And I don't think we propped a weakness policy in the right period, did we? I'm pretty sure we didn't. But let's see. So Rhyperia are going to not be next anymore, that's a bit of a shame, hmm, I would have liked us to have uh, to have won both of these games, let's see, uh, it has got the weakness policies, nah, okay, okay, we forget about that, uh, I think we have to solar beam here, and then hope that like an overheat can maybe get the Marowak the next turn, uh, which I don't know if it's going to be able to, but we'll see, we can only try, um, we've got to have like a Bon Morang miss I think here from the um, opposing Opposing Marak. Okay, we could have definitely played this a little better. We kind of just walked into this loss ourselves, really, from the start. Not paying attention to the weakness policy proccing. Um Bomberang misses, so we might we've got a bit of a lifeline here. Uh, the psychic train disappears. How much is an overheat gonna do from our nine tails? Um I think it's what we've gotta go for, to be honest. <laughs> Let's see. Fingers crossed, friends. It can do it. Let's see. It's gonna be pretty powerful. I don't think it'll be enough resisted nowhere near enough and a bon meringue will definitely get us in, in just one so there we go very good game to my opponent um really bad game from us but you know the thing is we are just showcasing the teams uh really so very good game to ellis um we'll move on to the rental team for you friends um oh, i can't believe i did that Okay, well, never mind. Hopefully, if you try this team out, friend, you'll have a lot more success with it, with it in future. So we'll just jump straight into it, and uh, we'll get you that rental team ASAP. And we will throw in this Charizard team. And I kind of wanted to uh, do a Charizard team, because I think Sun's going to be irrelevant weather in this format. So I kind of wanted to not only put like teams that I think are quite fun like the weakness policy high dragon team that we did a couple of days ago but like the uh, the GMAX colossal team the teams that are going to be relevant in the format I think are more useful as well to put up for you guys to play with not only to learn how these teams kind of play but also see if you like them and things and, and ways with how these teams get beat so you can implement that in your own team building if these teams do become very popular uh, in the, the the near future in the format. But there's the uh, the rental team, friends. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Uh, do drop a like as always on the video, and do leave your comments as well down below. Let me know your thoughts on these videos and the run up to series six, what you're looking forward to playing, and things like that. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe. Do hit that notification bell as well because we've got a flurry of series six teams coming up for you um, in the lead up to series six starting next Tuesday. And that one big episode on Monday where we'll have about 14 poker pits for you guys to have to play around with those teams um, in preparation to, for going into Series 6 to help you get a foot up in the new format. So I'm going to end it there. As always, like I say, drop a like on the video. It really helps. And uh, we'll sign off. So until next time, friends, take care of yourselves. Have a good one. And uh, I'll see you next time. So until then, bye-bye.